Bob. Carbohydrates, animal starch are stored in the liver in the form of glycogen. If an atom is described as being very electronegative, that means it has a very great affinity or drawing power for electrons. B, as in boy, great affinity or drawing power for electrons if it's electronegative. What is the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution having a pH of 5? 1 over 100,000. So, what is, it's, it's E down here. Um, we have... Just shift the shift to zero, or shift the decimal. Ten, a thousand. I'm sorry. Ten, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand. So this is one point zero times ten to the minus fifth. That's what that is. That's one over a hundred thousand. That's how this would be. Just like 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. Well, then you can just figure out what that means. All right. A solution that has a pH of 2 has a hydrogen ion concentration how many times greater than pure water? Well, pure water is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. It's a 1 and 5 zeros. Again, 100,000 is the number we're working with. It's E again for Edward. A solution that is pH of 10 is basic, B as in boy. Visceral pericardium represents a serous membrane covering the heart. Pericardium around the heart, visceral on the organ itself. Which of the following is not an organ system? Splenic. Number 18, globular proteins are biological catalysts, enzymes. Everything else is false, is wrong. They are biological catalyst enzymes. Uh, which of the following is true of concentrations? Molarity is one mole of something per liter of solution. Everything else, every statement here other than that is false, is wrong. Which of the following is not emitted by radioisotopes? Delta particles do not exist. You have alpha, beta, gamma, but not delta. And then number 21, the tendency of molecules to scatter evenly through an environment, and it's diffusion. Down their concentration gradients, that's diffusion. From a higher concentration to a lower, that's down the concentration gradient. Uh, the next one, and let me jump to like 26 or something. This one, 26, the tendency of water to move through a semi-permeable membrane from a solution of fewer dissolved molecules that is solute to more is osmosis. So 21 was diffusion, 26 was osmosis. Number 22, fibrous proteins. Uh, the answer is... Uh, are long structural proteins, very stable and insoluble, not soluble in water. The rest, the rest of those statements are incorrect. Next, alpha helix is an example of a protein secondary structure. Protein secondary structure. Let me see what's up here. Um, triglyceride is composed of which of the following? One glycerol and three fatty acids. Next, you're not going to see these same questions again. You'll see questions like them. You're not going to see the same questions again on Monday. You'll see questions very similar. So you got to know this stuff. The pH of our stomach secretions, gastric secretions, two. Bees and boy. The tendency of water, I already did that. Number 27, the trachea is contained in which of the following? Mediastinal. Mediastinal, 27. Which of the following is an important buffer for pH? Bicarbonate anion. I told you if CO2 dissolves in water, you get, and I did that in the lecture. I even went back in and changed my lecture 
so that you could see it. I did it before your very eyes in the YouTube lecture on chemistry. Literally while I was giving it, I went in and changed the, the uh, lecture. And I said, we're adding this, just so you can see that CO2 adds to water. But it already had bicarbonate anion. And that bicarbonate anion is a very important pH hydrogen buffer. So if you get excess hydrogen, it adds to this, and then it goes to the left, it becomes H2CO3, and then it breaks apart into CO2 and water, and you breathe it out. Very important to know. I'm going to ask you something like that again for sure. Okay, 29. Which of the following is a monosaccharide? Ribose. C. Number 30. The negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration is known as what? And, and moles per liter. pH. That is pH. Number 31, compared to blood, 400 milliosmolar is hyperosmotic, hypertonic. Number A, letter A. Don't don't be asking me what blood osmolarity is. It's something you should already know. Okay? I don't feel you want to know. I'm like, nope. This this question right here, it answered a couple of questions. It literally required two pieces of information to get it right. <clears throat> One was you had to know what blood osmolarity is, and the other one you had to know what you know, hypertonicity is. And, um, and those are absolutely, I, I like that question. Okay, what solution has the highest osmolarity? We had gone over this in review. The answer is A, because sodium chloride is a salt, it breaks apart. The osmolarity is double the molarity. If it's one molar, it's two osmol. Okay. 20, uh, 33, specific uh, term that refers to cell eating. That's going to be uh, something I can ask on the uh, exam coming up. So I have a whole word bank, a whole question bank for the exam coming up. I'm going to ask questions like this. What is the answer to this? Cell eating, phagocytosis. Man, look for that on the exam. That and pinocytosis and exocytosis. All of those cell organelles are going to be on the exam on Monday. And multiple choice and true false, maybe some fill-ins. And um, so are all the, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, it's being up here. I better drink something else. Oh. Krebs cycle glycolysis. <coughs> um, and electron transport all on the exam. We'll be going over it. Now let's go to the true faults. Now let's go to the fill-ins. Okay, which abdominal pelvic quadrant contains the liver? Remember the quadrants. You've got the right upper, left upper. Uh, right lower, left lower. You've got them one, two, three, and four in that same order. Now I do want you to know them by descriptions and not just numbers. <clears throat> the answer for the liver is in the right upper. One. And you have to know what all we're all around. I told you that diagram has all those organs like appendix, stomach, etc., semicolon, cecum, semicolon. All of those, you have to be able to put those into quadrants. Now, it's saying that my internet connection is unstable. If I lose you guys, uh, just stay on the line and it'll come back. I'm about to switch to a hotspot, but I don't always get unlimited hotspot use. <coughs> But I do. Blackberry is still in business. I have a new Blackberry. It's good. Okay. Um, the first one I've already answered. Number two, we're leaving out. I hope you know that for when it comes to test time, exam time. What's the most abundant? Answer that for the exam. Man, if I don't have it here, I can have it. For sure, I'll have it on the exam. So there it is. What is the most abundant cation in extracellular fluid outside? What is it? <clears throat> Betty, I'm calling on you. I don't even see you. Are you there? Betty, Betty, are you there? Don't hear you or see you. Betty? Okay, since you took 220 with me, you can answer this question. Um, and I know how smart you are, and I know how 
capable you are, and I also know that you're, you're quiet. You don't like to be put on the spot, I don't blame you. Uh, but do you remember, what would you guess is the most abundant uh, cation in extracellular fluid? Outside is uh, sodium. Correct. What is the concentration of sodium outside the cell, buddy? 150 more. Love it. You can go back to your quietness now. Well done. Very well done. Love it. She was 100% correct in both. Okay? That's what I expect from you guys. If I know you guys had this before, I'll, I'll call on you. If, you're, if I see you in an audience and I'm giving a talk sometime, I've done this before. I had a couple hundred people in an audience. There's a lot of students. I said, uh, I said, you know, one of my excellent students, I said, you know, what's the answer to this? She came in, man. She hadn't had it in years. She was great. So proud of her. Yeah, for girls. And she was really good. Yeah. Just like, just like Betty. Well done, Betty. And make sure you all are able to do this. We cover something, you have to know it. Okay. Um, now, this is a question you had. It says, name one element found in proteins that is not found in carbohydrates. Some of you got it right. Most of you had a hard time with that. The answer is nitrogen was the correct answer that some of you gave. I would have accepted sulfur because in two of the amino acids like cysteine and methionine, there's sulfur. But I would take sulfur or I would take nitrogen, which is the main, really the first thing that should come to mind. Because carbohydrates and fats, they don't have any nitrogen. They're not nitrogenous bases. All they have are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's all they've got. That is their lipid component or their carbohydrate component. If they're attached to a protein, if it's a glycoprotein, well, yeah, the protein part's going to have nitrogen. <clears throat> all right? Uh, so that was the answer. What major system includes the spleen, the lymph nodes, and tonsils? Lymphatic. O-Y-M-P-H-A-T-I-C. What subatomic molecule is most important in determining the element's identity? Protons. Protons, folks. Now what we're going to do is go to the uh, true faults. The appendix is found in the left lower quadrant. False. Right lower. The stomach is covered by visceral peritoneum. Correct. True. Because what is the peritoneal cavity? It's the abdominal pelvic cavity. What do you call that serous membrane on all of the organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity that are covering the organs? You call it visceral peritoneum. So visceral peritoneum covers the liver. It covers the stomach. It covers the bladder. It covers the ovaries. I mean, uh, uh, not really. It covers... Uh, intestines it covers the pancreas all right yeah the fossil that has lost 50 percent of its radioactivity from carbon 14 is 5,000 years old true because you know the half-life of carbon 14 is 5,000 years a fossil that has lost 75 percent of its radioactivity is 10,000 years true an acid may be described as a hydrogen proton donor. True. Isotopes differ from each other only in the number of protons they contain. Hell no. Only in the number of neutrons they contain. False. So six is false. If you change the number of protons, you change the element. It's not that element anymore. Okay, number seven, hydrogen ion concentration in solution having a pH of three is 1,000 molar. Heck no. False. It's one over 1,000 molar. It's, yeah, we're going to have three zeros involved, but it's the fraction one over 1,000, not 1,000. All right. So seven is false. The number of electrons uh, contributes to the atomic weight of an element. No, just protons and neutrons. The so eight is false. Um, a red blood cell placed in a solution that is 0.2 molar sodium chloride would be expected to shrink. True, because 0.2 molar sodium chloride 
0.2 times a thousand is 200, so that's 200 millimoles of sodium chloride. And that means I'm going to have 200 millimoles of sodium and 200 millimoles of chloride. That's going to be 400 milliosmolar. 400 milliosmolar. And 400 is greater than 300, therefore the red blood cell is going to shrink. So 9 is true. A solution that has 100 millimolar glucose, 100 millimolar glycine, which is an amino acid, and 50 millimolar sodium chloride would be isosmotic or isotonic. True! How's that? Because remember the salt gets you double the molarity. Double the molarity, so that becomes 100. And then glucose doesn't break apart, so it's 100 millimolar. This is, a, this, is a, a, this is 100 milliosmolar then, that's 100 milliosmolar, and then that becomes 100 milliosmolar because of 50 of sodium and 50 of chloride. Total is 300 milliosmolar, and 300 equals 300 of what makes blood happy. It makes the cells in blood, you know, surrounded by blood happy. So that 10 is true. Uh, 11, the more carbon dioxide you dissolve in the blood, the higher the pH, hell no! You dissolve carbon dioxide like this right here, my soda, it's going to dissolve away my tea if I keep it in my mouth long enough because it's acidic. Carbon dioxide dissolved in water makes carbonic acid. That goes back to that, and then that breaks apart the, the acid, the hydrogen, and bicarbonate anion. Dissolve carbon dioxide into this, I am drinking an acid solution. This is carbonic acid. Dissolve CO2 in water and it makes acid. Here it is. But it's dissolved in our blood. But that acid part is buffered to keep our blood at pH 7.4, you know. Well, that goes down to 15. Let me jump to 15. pH of blood is 7.0. Man, some of you guys are like, well, I know, I know blood. You cracked me up. A lot of you are like this, like, I know blood is 7.4, but it's 7.0, 7.4. I just start laughing at you under my breath. You know that. Your sweethearts, you knew the answer. You knew the answer. And then all I would say to you is, is 7.4 the same as 7.0? I mean, there are half of you, half of you are like, I wonder if you, but what you were thinking is, you are wondering if I was tricking you or somehow rounding it. Of course not. There's a significant figure here. It wasn't a trick question. And 7.4 is the pH of our blood, and 7.0 is not 7.4. Okay, our blood is slightly out, but even though when we exhale, we're blowing off CO2, even though our metabolism makes CO2, and we'll see it tonight, we're gonna see that tonight, we have CO2 dissolved in our blood, but it's not enough to make our blood go into the acid range, because remember, below seven is acid. So that question up there about the more CO2, the more CO2 dissolved, the higher the pH, heck no, the lower the pH. And the lower the pH, the more acidic it is, remember? Okay, bleach is alkaline, yes it is, that means it's, it's basic, so that's true. Uh, 11 was false, um, 10 was true. And then uh, 13, tritium can be used to make radioactive water. Heck yeah, because what is tritium as an element? It's hydrogen. It's heavy hydrogen, folks, with two extra neutrons. It's radioactive, but it's hydrogen. It's an isotope of hydrogen. Okay, uh, so yes, that's true. It's the number 14, it's wine and coffee, acidic pH, true. Uh, number 15, blood pH is 7.0, false. 7.4 is the answer. Uh, 16, the spleen belongs to the endocrine system, endocrine system, false. 17, our bodies are 90% water, false. Our bodies, the, our, the 18 year old male has 61% water, his whole body. An 18 year old female on the average is 51% water her whole body, okay? So that's, cells might be 90% water, but not the whole body. Okay, split, I already said that. Gap junctions allow direct passage of chemical substances between, true. 
And the air we breathe is 21% oxygen and the atmospheric pressure 14.7, true. Now, um, huh, I just thought of something. Uh, that one, the cap junctions one is unfair uh, because I, um, that's in the next section. So I'm going to have to give you a little bonus on that. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to, uh, let me see. Let's see if this turns out. I'm going to give you a little curve. Okay, here we go. Let me see what the curve is going to be. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm too easy. I'm going to give you bonus questions for doing other things. All right, I'm going to give you a two and a half percent curve on the exam. Your, your percent that you got is going to be raised by two and a half percent, which means I'm going to go to each of your scores and I'm going to add one. One divided by 40, you know, because 40 point quiz. One divided by 40 is two and a half percent. All right, so it's, you know, 0.025 times 100 makes it two and a half. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that to all of your grades. That'll compensate for this one right here, which is not even close to one point out of 40, half of that, and anything else that might have been a little bit questionable, but I don't think anything else was questionable for fairness. So I'm erring on the side of compassion. I'm going to just simply, I probably, out of fairness, should elevate your grades by 1%, 1.25%. I'm going to elevate your grades by 2.5 percent, bearing on the side of compassion. So, and that'll stick. It'll hold. I mean, it's it's becomes part of your grade. Three points. <clears throat> okay. So, um, but I don't. I mean, you know, it's still staying fair, and you know what you have to do as far as studying is concerned. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to leave this quiz now. Do you have any? Uh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Because I want to go to some new material, and I really am going to let you go probably, definitely by 8 o'clock, if not possibly by 8 o'clock, maybe even sooner, maybe in an hour. Because I want you to be able to see that lecture, that cell lecture that I put on, that the cell and all the organelles, I mean to say. It's like an hour and 34 minutes long. I want you to see that, and I'd like you to